Michelson's design in 1919 to measure the diameter of stars utilized a 20-foot baseline interferometer attached in front of the 100-inch telescope at Mount Wilson. I'm gonna show you how to make a stellar interferometer and um, I think it's pretty challenging. Uh, it's, um, you're gonna do one meter baseline, uh, which basically two mirrors, one meter apart, one here, one here. This is a Newtonian telescope at the center. There are two fold mirrors here, two fold mirrors here. So the starlight comes in, hits these two mirrors, fold mirrors, one meter apart. It reflects into these mirrors and then folds and then hits the mirror, the primary mirror, at two points, and it's focused to the secondary, which is brought back up to be focused on the ocular. In the uh, Fourier domain, uh, you would have basically a sync function and it relates to the distance of the stars, the wavelength, and the diameter of the star. So having the wavelength and the distance of the star, one can determine the star diameter. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to remove these rods. Well, before that, before everything, this, find, uh, this finder scope has to be out of the way. So let's take that out. Extremely easy to work with. Okay, so this front piece is off. Okay, I'm gonna put this aside. After removing those, now I have access to these. Like I said, this is the only time that you cannot access these because there are eight rods. So when the outer rods are in, the inner rods cannot be accessed, the set screws. So now I will go ahead and remove these. The hole was too deep, this screw uh, hole. So I added this. So it will give me more length after I tighten it to one end. You see, now I can go ahead and add my 150 millimeter rods. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these. These are nice and tight. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put back the spider assembly. See, these are the three rods that secure this in place. Every time we take out some, sometimes one of these set screws gets tight and locks it. Okay, let's say we are happy about around here. So that's going to give us plenty of disk bands to focus to a closer object. And then for the starlight we can Always, we can focus it easily. The IPC, the IPC has a lot of area here. I'm gonna go ahead and install the outer rods for the six by six plate. You see right now, I don't have access to those set screws. Okay, great. Is that okay?
slide it over the tubing. The whole pattern on the tubing matches the whole pattern on the plates. So now I have to do, I'll start with one screw. When installed, one still has access to these uh, rod screws. Okay. You just set them here. I'm going to start aligning this. The way I can do, I'll do that is I'm going to start with this mirror here. Basically, it's a laser. And what I do, I'm, I've constructed this adapter to um, basically secure the laser in place, pointing towards this fold mirror. And I'm going to just use one screw to secure it here. Laser beam here. Uh, I'm sure you can see it now. So I want to be seeing the mirror reflected on the secondary here. You see, I want the beam to be reflected on the secondary. We change the rod and now the telescope is 50 millimeter longer. Hopefully I can look at the um, fringes and show them to you. As I said, we are using these two areas of the mirror. It's a parabolic mirror, but in reality, we are only using two 25 millimeter apertures from here. 25 feet, 30 feet away, I have a sodium lamp, and I'm gonna focus to it. What I think is happening is uh, the beams, because the sodium lamp is close in the lab, it's only 25 feet away. When it comes in by tilting these mirrors, trying to meet the two beams together, two images together. Uh, it's missing, uh, you know, I mean, this secondary mirror is too small in here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a more elaborate setup using a larger um, mirror uh, to do the work. This 45 degree mirror holder um, is intended to work with this tilt mount. Both of these parts are intended for the mini optic system, but we're going to use it in the macro. And the way we're going to do that, macro has a step down ring. We're going to use that to, it's going to make it too long if you go this way. So I'm going to mount it here. There are so many mounting puzzles. We can mount it in these grooves or this groove. I want to remove these two screws. As you can see, it's difficult to do here, but I can go through the other micro optic plate and do it like that, you see. That's the beauty of this system. So that's out. Now I would like to mount this here. And the way I'm gonna do that is, let's see if this is gonna allow me to do that. Yeah, there is enough space there. All I need is a, you see I can mount these. The nice thing about the 351 is that we can simply put it in later. I need to install these uh, micro optic uh, cone tip screws. I can go ahead and do it from the center instead of having to drive them through from the 